Today we're going to be talking about how to build a quality acquisition pipeline. Before we start, let's talk about the difference between inbound and outbound. Inbound are those acquisition opportunities that are going to be coming to you from primarily investment bankers or those from outside the organization. It's going to be from those that represent sellers and are bringing opportunities to you. Outbound is where you as an organization have identified needs and particular companies that you may be interested and then conduct a proactive outreach campaign to explore the possibility of a sale or an acquisition. So once you have thought through your origination allocation strategy or how you'd like to target both inbound and outbound and to what percentage of your overall pipeline, you're going to want to consider the five main foundational core concepts to building a pipeline. The first is that you start with a set of specific strategic priorities. You want these to be as narrowly defined as possible. You want to create and enforce a consistent evaluation criteria, and you want them to be objective. You want to make sure that you have this evaluation criteria established before the pipeline begins to be populated. This is because you want the evaluation criteria to be a result of the specific things that are important to you as a company and not a reaction to what you're seeing in your pipeline. Third, you want to define and identify a governance structure and a set of processes that enables you to move quickly. You want to understand who needs to be involved to get to a decision and what the timeline and process looks like so that you can communicate that to those outside your company. Fourth, and related to the third point, is identifying a cross-functional team that may not necessarily be in the decision-making process but need to be involved. This could include ben based on uh, your company, it could be a legal department, an HR department, a real estate group, or perhaps even a regulatory body that needs to be involved and informed in the process. And fifth, you need to use the right set of tools to build and track your pipeline. Excel is not a satisfactory tool for this process. And although it seems like a very simple solution to begin, it makes it difficult for you to have a uh, pipeline that allows you to both track and report to your leadership team on the progress of your acquisition uh, uh, pipeline activities. So you want to begin, investigate, identify, uh, purchase if necessary, and put into place a right, uh, a good tool that enables you to do all this. Once you have the foundational concepts down, and we'll talk about inbound first, uh, you need to begin to think through how you're going to develop that inbound activity. And this is about developing relationships with investment bankers. Before you begin an outreach campaign to an investment bank, what you want to do is sit down and, under and identify those investment banks that are most likely to represent the types of companies that you're going to be interested in. Not all investment banks represent all types of sellers and all types of industries. Identify 10 to 20 investment banks that have represented sellers in the space or the industry or similar type companies that you think are going to be of interest of you in the future. Once you've identified those investment banks, reach out to the bankers and begin to develop rapport and relationship. They do not want to waste their time. You need to establish yourself as a credible buyer. Make sure that you have a process in place and you address those foundational concepts first. This is going to help establish you as a credible and viable buyer so that you get brought into the process earlier rather than later. If you get brought into a process later, you're going to be at a disadvantage as a bidder or a buyer. Similarly, to identifying the list of investment bankers that you want to have a relationship with is identify and develop that crisp message. Make sure that it can be communicated in a very efficient and concise manner. Make sure that there's no ambiguity and the investment bankers understand exactly what you're looking for. And this should convey your strategic priorities. Now talking about outbound activities or outbound acquisition opportunities, this is where you're going to want to work with your business unit, your functional leaders, or other the leaders that are in charge of the various different business groups. You want to identify and prioritize what the specific needs or gaps they have where an inorganic acquisition strategy can complement or augment the organic growth initiatives that they already have. Identify those things that are most urgent to them. It could be skill gaps, credibility gaps, qualification gaps, or it could be simply that you need to adjust or expand to a market that's adjacent to what you're currently offering, whether that's a service or a product. The idea is that you need to have a prioritized list of what your business needs and what problems that this type of an acquisition or an inorganic effort could solve.
And second, you want to have that executive support and advocacy developed up front. What you don't want to do is begin a proactive outreach campaign, have the discussions with the entrepreneurs without your executive team lined up and behind the, the, this activity and make sure that you have the right advocates, whether it's going to your management committee, your board, your investment committee, or, or, or whatever, you, whatever you have. You want to make sure that you have that type of support already lined up so that you don't have to begin these conversations with the entrepreneurs, pause, develop support, and go back to it. It's going to lead to a less uh, successful outcome. So these are the core concepts of building an acquisition, a quality acquisition pipeline. If you like, uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, like below, uh, leave me some comments, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much.